Hello there and welcome to another episode of Work Smarter, Not Harder with me, Tony Harmer. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to make an Illustrator donut chart with completely live graph data. This isn't ungrouped. You can edit the actual data from this. Let's not confuse, by the way, a donut chart with a radial bar chart. Here's what one of those looks like, okay? And we'll be looking at that in the very next episode. But for now, we're going to stick with the donut chart, okay? Some of the same principles apply, just a little twist on the end for that. But like I said, that's in the next episode. So let's go about building one. First off, we're going to need the pie graph tool. If you don't know where the graphing tools are, quickest route to them is tap J on your keyboard and that highlights the column graph tool. You can then go to that in the toolbox, click and hold on it and the other tools will be revealed to you. So I'm going to choose the pie graph tool like so and then click and drag out an area for the chart to appear. Then I need to populate that with some data. Now, while you can paste in data from Excel, I'm really just going to type this in, okay? So I'm going to type uh, maybe 40 and then uh, 30 and then another 30 on the end there, like so. And I'm going to apply the tick on the right-hand side of the data window and then close the data window like that. First thing I want to do here is to remove the strokes on this. Now you can go up to the stroke drop down in the options bar just there. But what I want to do is do it the quick way. Okay, so my stroke is actually behind the fill. Now you can swap those over by tapping the X key as you can see me doing just there. Once the stroke is in front, just hit the slash key on your keyboard and that removes the stroke. Okay. Then what I need to do is to get the selection tool. So I'm going to tap V on my keyboard for that and drag this chart in so it intersects with the center of the artboard like so. I can move it and do other things with it later. Just for construction though, I want it in the center of the artboard because the smart guides can help me out. And if you're not seeing your smart guides, then command U or control U or you can find them in the view menu to turn those on from there. Okay, next I need the direct selection tool. So I'm just gonna tap A on my keyboard, okay? So I'll click away at first to deselect everything. And then I'm going to fill up some of these wedges with color. So I'll click on this wedge here and choose a color for that. And then one for that slice, and then one for that slice. So there you are. My wedges are now ready to go. So let's make the donut part. And for that, it's going to be two ellipses. So I'm just going to tap L on my keyboard to get the ellipse tool. I'm going to go to the center here, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift to draw a constrained circle from the center outwards. So I'm holding those down, and then just clicking and dragging to draw the outer circle first, releasing the mouse button at that, okay? So that's that circle drawn. I'm then going to deselect that one, so Shift Command A or Shift Control A if you're on the PC. Take my cursor back to the center. Okay, and this time the smart guides are showing me where the center of the circle is. So again, Alt and Shift, and then drag to create the inner circle, as it were. Okay, perfect. Now that I've done that, let's zoom back out again, just there. I'm going to tap V on my keyboard to get the selection tool. Hold down Shift and then click the larger ellipse that we drew a moment ago. So they're now both selected. I'm then going to hold down the shift key and tap M. That gets me the shape builder tool. Move it towards the middle and it highlights that smaller ellipse. Hold down the alt key and click and it punches that one out of the larger one. All we need to do then is tap V to get the selection tool. Drag across those two things, right? So what you're doing is you're selecting the new compound path that you made with the shape builder and the graph together and then do command seven or control seven on the pc to create a clipping group okay if you want to do that via the menu it's object clipping mask make from there okay so now we can edit absolutely everything we need to edit if we wanted to go in and change the graph data all we'd need to do is double click on the clip group 
okay, and then click again to select the graph. Remember that the options bar will always tell you what's going on just here, okay. So I'm going to click on the graph to select it and then right click and choose data. Then I can modify this data here. So this time it's going to be 60. Then I'm just going to tab across and type 25 just there and 15 just there and hit the tick to apply that or hit enter on my keyboard and close that window. So you can see that that is completely editable. I can also get in, if I get my direct selection tool here, you can see that I can actually work with parts of the clipping mask as well. Now I need to be careful there because what I don't want to do is just select a line segment. So I'm just going to tap V to get the selection tool. Okay, hold down Alt and Shift and then I can resize this ellipse and you can see it's really easy for me to modify the mask like so. And then when I'm done, just double click anywhere outside of that and you've got your entire graph there. And clipping groups can have other effects applied to them. So for example, in the initial example I showed you, okay, there was an outer glow applied to that. You can see it does that perfectly well. All right, so there you are. That's it. We are done for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Reach out to me via Twitter. Follow my Facebook page. Check out the blog, which has moved, by the way. You'll see the new address, uh, tonyharmer.expert, coming up in just a moment with the other details. Keep on watching, and until next time, see ya.